and the fiscal cliff. It is obviously back in focus, and our next guest is Senator Pat Toomey, Republican from Pennsylvania. Jonathan, why don't you start us out? I think you have a question for the senator on the fiscal cliff issue. Yes, hello, Senator. Um, you know, one of the hello. questions that um, that I'm hearing from investors is a timing issue. There's a there's so much to work through between now and year end. How much are we going to be able to address now and how much are we going to have to push off into next year and what might the, the process be to, uh, to resolve some of those from a kind of a timing perspective? Uh, well, it'd certainly be very constructive if we could get some of these things solved now uh, rather than deal next year. For instance, um, some of my colleagues in the Senate think we should go over the cliff and then maybe go back and lower some tax rates back down to where they were prior to the cliff. I, for one, think that's a terrible idea. I think we ought to extend the current tax rates in their entirety and work through some pro-growth tax reform. Um, you know, I, we've, we've tried to suggest this and didn't, didn't get too much progress on the other side. So I'm just hoping now that the election's over and um, p people can uh, focus at least for some time on policy instead of politics that we could, uh, we could get some things done. Senator, can I ask you a quick question about that? There's a there's sure. a business group that's hitting the news wires right now. Um, it's the uh, Manufacturers Association and a group of CEOs. Are, they're saying we can't afford to bump up against the fiscal cliff and that basically you should just tackle what you need to tackle right now and save the compromise on taxes and entitlements to 2013. Doable or not? Well, I, I think the spending, the very modest scale of the spending cuts that are in the sequester have to go ahead. Now, I'd prefer they be reconfigured because I think they, they land uh, too heavily on our defense budget. But, uh, you know, $100 billion out of a $3.7 trillion budget is actually a small cut and won't do any economic harm. Uh, it, it could do some national security harm, but it wouldn't do economic harm. And that's why I think we reconfigure them and we're fine. The damage to the economy comes from this massive tax increase. Uh, you know, you mentioned, I heard just a moment ago, how high dividend stocks are getting hit today. Right. Well, as well they should, the president's plan is to triple the tax rate on, on these things. Um, that's a disaster. It's terrible for our economy. It's terrible for growth. So uh, by all means, I'd like to solve that problem now uh, if we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really, we really should avoid this huge tax increase that's right. looming. Senator Toomey, uh, thank you, Sue. Uh, Senator Toomey, Tyler Matheson here. I do want to ask you about natural gas fracking in your state and coal, but before I I get to those two. If the president were to acknowledge that we can't afford a government as expensive as the one we have today, and he were to acknowledge and work uh, seriously towards the kind of tax reform, broadening the base, uh, getting rid of some loopholes that, that you advocate, could you acknowledge that uh, the government uh, needs more revenue if that revenue strictly went to reduce the debt? I would, I would put it a little differently and refer back to the proposal that I personally put on the table when I was a member of the Super Committee. The optimal way to solve our fiscal problem is not raising taxes on anybody. The problem's a spending problem. That's, to fix that, that's the optimal way. But if the other side refuses to do that unless they get some tax increase, then the only way that I think it could make any sense to do that is to do it in the context of pro-growth tax reform. In other words, you don't raise rates on anybody you lower marginal rates, but then offset the lost revenue by reducing the value of deductions and write-offs and loopholes. And if you have to, in order to get the improvement, uh, the, the reforms and spending that we need, then you might have to have generate a little bit more revenue from those reduction in deductions uh, to, to more than offset the reduction in marginal rates, but only if we're actually solving the problem, mm -hmm. and that is a, a too expansive a welfare state. Well, Senator, what you just said sounds like maybe the kernel of, uh, of some progress there. Let me turn you now to natural gas fracking, which is very important in your state, particularly up in the north and northeast, right. and coal, which is very important in the Pittsburgh and southwest of the state. Right. What is the future of those two areas under a second Obama administration? Well, it's a big concern. Um, the, the president's not particularly fond of fossil fuels, as we know, and particularly coal. There's been a very aggressive effort to really 
dramatically diminish our ability to, to use coal, and that's enormously problematic for all of America, but in particular for coal-producing states like Pennsylvania. You know, we've had to close six Pennsylvania power plants just because of new, a whole new generation of EPA regulations. That's going to raise the cost of energy for us, and that's problematic. Now, in the meantime, of course, there's been a huge boom in natural gas that's dramatically low with the price, and, and that has largely offset some of the damage that's been done on, on the coal side so far. But we really ought to be using both of these, and we ought to be drilling for more oil. We really could be energy independent, given the gas that we found and the, and the oil that's coming from uh, new, new reserves that we can reach through fracking. We can be energy independent, but we've got to be willing to use the fossil fuels we have. Senator Toomey, thank you very much. Sue, back to you for a sec.